Welcome to Temple Baptist Church here at Poplar Bluff. We're doing our Sunday school class and we welcome you to it. We pray that you receive a blessing from the lesson today. The lesson is found in Proverbs chapter 29 verses 1 through 3 and 12 through 20. And uh, the title of the lesson is Accepting Discipline. And when I say the word discipline, if I were in a classroom setting and I would ask people, what is the first thing you think of when you hear the word discipline? And I would venture to say that most of the people would say they would think about punishment or about getting a whipping, being punished for something you've done. And when you Google, and I've just become a friend of Google here lately, started learning how to operate some of these things, uh, 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 new, new, new equipment that we have, modern technology, but uh, discipline, if it says it's a noun, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. So even in the definition of discipline, they talk about uh, punishment, correction, and that type of thing. So today I'm going to do, do some little visual aids for us. I'm going to show some things that as a child growing up, and I don't think probably today you'll find these any of these in use very much, but uh, as a child growing up, they were some of the instruments that people used to discipline with. First one I want to show is, is a switch. This is just a limb off a tree. Those of you that know, uh, remember those well. Mom always had one of those, and mom was the one that used the switch. And a lot of times she would leave that laying on top of the refrigerator. A lot of times she would leave that uh, laying on the counter. And if we got a chance, we'd run through the house and grab it and break it and take it outside and throw it away. But it didn't deter her from going and getting another one and using it. Then another one that probably some of you have used, been used or used, a fly swatter. Now this is not a, this is more of a modern day fly swatter than what we had when I was growing up. They were all made out of wire and this one here has got a little wear and tear on it but it's not from using it as a means of discipline. It's just because it would have been used and uh, uh, here's another one that was used by some people. That's a wooden spoon. Now this is not as big a wooden spoon as I wanted to get. Yeah, some of you remember the big wooden spoons that used to fork that hung on the wall of people's homes. I really wanted to get one of those, but it made a pretty good, uh, made a pretty good paddle. Uh, just whatever they could get. Now, school, teacher had one of these sometimes, didn't they? They had a ruler. And you may have to go up to their desk and you stick your hand up and they pop you one on the hand with it or they'd come by and tap you on the arm or whatever with that uh, uh, ruler just to get your attention you talking wasn't doing what you're supposed to be doing and so uh just uh, some things that are there now here's one that uh probably some of you remember a belt it's just a simple belt i remember as a kid having playing with one of these i don't know whether i can still do this or not but they used to take it and go pop well you could make it pop and when you heard that pop uh you knew something was about to happen so you know, but these are just uh, there's some objects that I thought would help us today in looking at this lesson. Now this in here <laughs> is a little bit to the extreme. It is a rather large paddle, larger than what I had thought I was going to use as a uh, visual aid today. But nevertheless, uh, those were at one time very popular in schools. Now I, I understand today they're not even probably not even one allowed in the school at all, but that's, that's a different story, so we'll not go into that. But, you know, just thinking about and discipline and all that. And, I, you know, uh, we're reading in, in Proverbs and Solomon and all the things that uh, he points out here about uh, uh, the discipline. And I'm just gonna, uh, today I wanna just do something, try to do things just a little bit different. Try to just cover uh, the, the main points of, uh, uh, what uh, Solomon is trying to uh, bring out here. He starts out in verse 1. He starts out with a, a, a warning, alerting God's people that if they develop an attitude of stubbornness or rebellion, that they're going to be destroyed. That's what he's saying there in, in verse 1 of our text in chapter 29 and verse 1. He's, he's telling us that, that you know, uh, Solomon warns that God's judgment, is, is, it, it hardens 
Uh, people will be stubborn and, you know, all that and uh, often reprove prior to judgment. So we have to think of that. And then you, you look at verse 2 and 3 in our text here today. And I say, I'm not going to read these to us. I hope you have a book at home or you have your Bible out and you're, you're following along with it. Uh, you know, too often, when I, these are examples that I show, we view discipline as a penalty rather than a benefit, don't we? I think the only time we got one of these was uh, because we had done something wrong and they wanted to get our attention and wanted to make sure we didn't do it again. And, but when, you know, uh, but when we say no to one thing, we're saying yes to something else, aren't we? You know, the athlete, uh, it takes discipline to be an athlete. It takes discipline in life to do anything. You have to be disciplined to do things. You know, they give up unhealthy foods to, uh, uh, so they can yet finish a marathon. Uh, a uh, farmer may say no to a long nap during harvest time so he can get out there and uh, uh, get the crops in while, he can, while he's, uh, he's able. Uh, living with discipline puts us in a position to flourish spiritually and rationally. You know, so when you think about discipline, and we, we talk about this a little bit today and talk about uh, wisdom and uh, the uh, discipline that is required in our life as Christians, you know, like I said, all these tools that I've pointed out today uh, have been used in the past, and in some instances probably are still being used today, but uh, it's not, uh, I don't think it's as prominent as it once was, and, and I'm gonna make this statement, you know, just because uh, a, lot of, a lot of times you can use different things as discipline, can't you? You can use different things, you know, just because uh, I may, Take chart, make me take notice if mom used that switch on me more than I would if somebody had done something else. Or, or maybe it'll make you stand in a corner or something like that. That's some of the things that people do today. But uh, you know, I just think that uh, as we look at the uh, next set of verses, verses 12 through 13, the uh, you know, wisdom is available to all people. That's the thing we want to, you know. Uh, you know, it speaks, maybe speaks of generalities, but I think these verses here, verses 12 through 14, uh, remind us of the influence of leadership. Those that are leaders, a, a ruler in Solomon's day, he had all the power, he had all the influence on lives of everyone under his reign. Citizens didn't have a voice. You know, I think they talk about uh, not having a choice. They didn't have one. They had no other choice but to submit to the person in authority. And, uh, you know, depending on who was in authority and how well they were going to be treated. Were they going to be treated good if it was a wise king? Uh, they would be treated good if it was a wicked king. They were going to be treated bad. So whatever, you know, uh, you know just encouraged, uh, you know, encouraged to make decisions that would make, uh, you know, make the commun community upright. And, uh, you know, if you, it just, like I said, depend on which one it was. If you made the right choice, uh, things were good, made the bad choice. You know, we're, we're prone to do that, aren't we, sometimes? We make choices in life. All of us have choices to make, and, and we do that. Uh, in verse 14, I'll just read this. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Just think about that. The ruler of wisdom, uh, you know, if the ruler has wisdom at his disposal, and he does, the picture in verse 10, 14 is that of a wise and godly king who uses what is available to lead his people in, in good, uh, good and positive way. That's the, that's the way, you know, that, that the king should do. And uh, so we just, uh, you know, think about that. Uh, you know, I think Solomon's point here is real clear that there is no excuse for operating outside of the wisdom of God. You know, if we do that, uh, then we warrant the chastisement of God. We, we warrant that. If we get outside of the bounds that God has set, you know, I, I, say, I kind of take it as a, a sports game or something like that. I know life's not a game, but you know, in sports you have rules, don't you? In baseball you have boundaries, you have the foul lines, you have the uh, fence that it's a home run, and you, know, you play within those boundaries. Football is played within boundaries. Uh, Soccer is played within boundaries. Basketball, uh, just about all games are played within some kind of boundaries. And as long as you stay within those boundaries, you don't get a uh, you don't get a lot of penalties. You know, but if you go out of bounds, you're going to be penalized for that. And uh, uh, so we just uh, just think about how God is uh, in control of things. How God uh, uh, 
uh, loves us, you know, the responsibility. And that's what we're going to move into in the last part of this uh, uh, lesson is the responsibility uh, in 29 verses 15 and 17. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase, but the righteous should see their fall. Correct the son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give you delight unto your soul. Okay, in these verses, to me, Solomon is applying God's wisdom to the rule of nature. He's saying, you know, he's addressing it to parents. He's telling parents that, uh, you know, parents have the responsibility of disciplining their children. That is the parent's responsibility. It's not somebody else's responsibility. We may try to put that off on somebody else today, but it comes back to the parents. You know, failing to, uh, to do so creates a selfish and wicked generation. And, you know, that's just, they're not going to be, that, that will be outlived by the righteous. You know, we, we have, and we see that today, and we talk about that today, and I don't want to, I don't really want to get over on this and dwell too much. So, you know, our, our younger generation gets a bad enough rap as it is, and, you know, there's a lot of good young people out there still yet. It's, it's kind of like everything else. The, the squeaking wheel gets the grease, you know, the one that's causing all the problems, the one that gets all the attention, and the, uh, you know, discipline a child, and, and I, I want to say this, it is, there is a lot of difference between discipline a child and abusing a child. There is the difference of night and day that, you know, the two, they're not the same. Uh, and discipline a child is fine, and again, I, I want to say this, find an appropriate way, both positive and negative, to correct bad behavior and to reward good behavior. You know, yeah, we think about uh, just uh, the bad things that people do. That's the only reason we, we bring it up. But do something good, you need to be recognized for that. Uh, you know, uh, discipline is uh, instructive, it's corrective, it's boundary setting. You know, like I said, as a child growing up, as a teenager growing up, I pretty well knew what my boundaries were. And I knew what happened if I crossed those boundaries, or I knew what could happen if I crossed those boundaries. And you know, uh, you know, Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter six and verse four, it says, uh, uh, "Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord." You know, but sadly today, and not I, you know, not today, parents raise undisciplined children, don't they? And when who bring an, an undisciplined child is is going to bring dishonor to uh, the family and uh, uh, gracious, just a little bit of gracious and firm discipline may be the most loving thing that a parent can take towards their children. The very most po positive thing you can do. I know uh, we hate to think about having to discipline a child or we, we even, I hate to think about being disciplined today at, at my age, but still yet, you know, I, I have certain responsibilities. I, you know, if I do something that is against the law, I'm gonna be disciplined for that, aren't I? But, uh, you know, a disciplined child is not only good for the child, it gives the, the parents peace of mind and, and all of that, I think. You know, correct the son and he shall give thee rest. Ye, yea, he shall give delight unto your soul. You know, just reminds the parent that uh, are responsible to raise their children with loving but firm discipline. You know, a child, and he has a responsibility uh, to that discipline to with respect of obedience. You know, you can, you can kind of see a domino effect that is taking place here. Uh, you know, the, the, the wicked are multiplied, the transgressions against God's law are then multiplied, and the end, the fall of the wicked. The, the true society as a whole, the true family, where loving discipline is absent, is, is just going to collapse. And children, I doubt if you'd have a child today that would admit this, you probably won't have very many adults that would miss this, well, admit this or not, but whether they want to admit it or not, they need and they want and they long for discipline. Security is found in discipline. When discipline is lacking, a child will run wild, an adult will run wild. Setting boundaries could be unpleasant. Oh, it, it is. You just have to tell your child that, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that, and their first response is, well, everybody else is doing it. That's always the response we had, wasn't it? Well, that doesn't make it right. Uh, and it's for the parent and the child as well. But uh, you know, God 
disciplines his children. He sets the boundaries. He wants us to uh, do the things that he asks us to do. Uh, you know, of all the tools of discipline that I showed here today, the, the switch, the belt, the fly swatter, the ruler, uh, all those things are tools that we as human beings use to uh, correct that discipline. Uh, somebody's not doing what they are supposed to do. There's tools we use, but did you ever think of the Bible as being a tool for discipline? You know, if we study God's word, we know what he wants us to do. And we are more inclined to do that. I want to read some passages of scripture out of Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to, we're going to close this lesson. And it's talking about the discipline of God. And in, in verse 3, For consider him who induced such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become worried and discouraged in your soul. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speak to you as a son. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with a son. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? We, we correct our children, don't we? And God, we are God's children. We do wrong, he's going to correct us. But if you are without chastisement, of which all become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. And you know, we, it goes on to talk about our fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more rapidly be in the subject of the Father and the Spirit and live for, you know, for they indeed for a few days chastened us. You know, my parents corrected me, at, uh, but the best times, but, he's, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his hope. Now, no chastening seems to be joyous for the present, and it don't, and you've got a whip in it. That's the last thing you want to think about is being joyful, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So accepting discipline, God disciplines, we discipline, discipline in different ways, and dif discipline is, uh, to me, is, uh, you know, being disciplined enough to uh, study God's Word, do th everything we do in life, we have to be disciplined at it. We have to be uh, uh, ready to get out there and, and do it, and if we don't do it, then we've got to be willing to pay the consequences. Now, thank you for your time today. I pray that this lesson will... Uh, uh, maybe bring back to memory something that we uh, have in the past and it'll help us today to understand that uh, you know God is the, in control and uh, if we do wrong he's going to discipline us but if we do right he's going to reward us may God bless you is our prayer